All right, guys. Today we're going to be camming with the oldies. Welcome back to another episode of Alpine Garage. We are going to be talking about the cam that we chose for our 347 stroker that's going in the 73 Bronco. And in a previous video, we listed about six cams that we were looking at. And I was struggling with which one to get. Overwhelmingly, y'all chose the Comp Cams 35-349-8. So 35-349-8. So this one is a an extreme this one is an extreme energy line comp cam. And it although it doesn't have the highest lift and it doesn't have the longest duration and it doesn't have the lowest lobe separation angle. Uh, it had a good mix of all three, and that's the reason why we chose it. Now, everything is limited by the heads that you use. Now, in this case, I'm using the stock Explorer GT40 heads. I am going to do a spring upgrade in it, so at least I have the spring upgrade. But I'm really not changing a whole lot else in it. In fact, I'm going to use a lot of the stock components in the valve train. Uh, for instance, the lifters are going to be the lifters that came out of here. I'm just rebuilding them. The lifter keepers and the rocker arms and everything else that I'm using on the heads are going to be stock. So I'm going to be porting the GT40 heads and I want to see what kind of uh, horsepower we can make with the GT40s or the port job. But I'm not going to go to the extent of, and I bought the springs, the springs are about 160 bucks and I can use the springs on another head. The, the rocker arms, I'm going to use the stock rocker arms because at this point if I decide to upgrade the rocker arms, all I have to do is take out the valve cover and upgrade the rocker arms. If I want to upgrade the head, then I don't have a lot of money in the heads and I can put aftermarket heads on there so I can see a horsepower difference. So there is a little bit of a reason why I stuck with the stock GT40s because I have them. And I've always wanted to port heads. So this will give me an opportunity to do it. And if I ruin them or if I want more horsepower, I can just bolt on another set and not have to worry about the block. So the lift on the stock cam, which is considered to be a good cam, the stock Explorer cam, is 0.422 and 0.448. So it's got a really low lift in it. And it's a torque engine. So, you know, you don't need a lot of lift for a lot of torque. But I did want to take that up a little bit so that it'll make a snappier motor. So this 348 cam actually comes with a 0.512 lift. Now, the springs that are stock, a lot of people say you can get 520 to 530 lift out of them without too much trouble. With a spring upgrade, uh, you can get about the same, maybe a little bit more. But And there were a lot of cams that had a 530 lift and a 525 lift that I really liked. I need to drop the power band down on the motor. And with this thing pumping out more cubic inches, all I have to do is get the power down in the, in the band. And the number one thing that does that is lobe separation angle. So typically, the Ford Explorer engines come with a 116 lobe separation angle. This cam drops down to a 114. Now, I could have gone down to a 112, and I could have gone down to a 110, but I didn't want to affect the vacuum, and remember that we're going to be putting this, we're going to be using the stock computer for the Explorer, so I didn't want to get so extreme in the numbers that it was going to make it hard to tune, but still give me the power that I want, and give a little bit more lift to the valves for increased airflow that this engine is going to be pumping out. And the duration of this motor is a 264, 270, so not too bad. It's not, it's not the longest duration. It's definitely more duration than the stock cam had. So I think overall we're getting a good bump out of this motor with this cam. And I think it's going to be really dependable and easy to tune compared to some of the other cams that we were looking at. All right, so here's the bad boy that we're using right here. The lubrication that they put on this actually dried since I've had it. So we're gonna clean this up and re-lube it and shove it in the block. You know, while we're cleaning this up, I'm gonna clean this up with some, uh, some of my favorite degreaser, which is uh, TSC 1000. And, you know, the question is, should I have gone bigger on the cam? You know, and I think about that ever since I bought the cam, and I think that's the curse of anyone who's building an engine, is should you go bigger? In my entire life, I have always gone bigger. I've gotten the, went for, you know, the, the, biggest, the biggest engine, for instance, in the Raptor. Go for the longest skis. Go for the biggest motorcycle, the biggest displacement in a motorcycle. And sometimes it's worked for me, and sometimes it's kind of bit me in the butt. And on the cam, I decided it was going to be an adult. And instead of going with something super extreme, 
I thought, you know, let's go, let's go middle of the road. Let's go something that's safe. And I'm not one of those guys that does anything that's safe. I, I safe to me uh, is really not in my nature. And so this cam represents a lot for me. For instance, on the motor, instead of just leaving it a 5.0 uh, or a 306, pouring it out and having it be a 306, or even just cleaning it up and putting the pistons back in, which it probably could have done, I had to go with 347. Now why? Why? Because it's a Bronco, right? I'm not going to be racing it. But I thought for the amount of money that I'm going to be building this engine, if I can make it have over 400 or 500 pounds of torque, that would be fun. But with the cam, I decided, you know, I'm going to play it safe. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to what people are telling me and that you don't need a super high lift cam for your Bronco unless you're gonna be racing it. So at this point, that's what we're gonna be doing. And I feel happy about it. I actually feel very strong about this cam. Uh, so I want it to be you know, something that I can depend on and will idle easily and work well with the computer. And then you ask yourself, you know, Chris, why would you stick with, for instance, the stock lifters and the stock rocker arms when you're going and building this 347 and putting a new cam in it and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it comes down to cost. If, it, if I had an unlimited budget, uh, I would buy everything. And you're like, but lifters are 150 bucks. Uh, true. But everything is 150 to 300 dollars. And if I didn't, if I didn't cut somewhere then it would I would be spending thousands more. I've already spent thousands more than I needed to on the uh, on the machine shops, for instance. The machine shops took all of my money on this motor practically. And why was I even talking about that? Oh, so when it comes to machine shops, I want to do everything myself. I want to weld it. I want to paint. I want to do all these things myself on this truck because I feel like when I leave it to somebody else, uh, I'm disappointed all the time. And it's probably who I pick uh, because I may be picking the cheapest you know, place, but I'm constantly disappointed. I can tell you that I did not pick the cheapest machine shop, so or the, the two cheapest machine shops. I chose those based off of recommendations from other people. And they probably had good, they probably had good uh, experience with them, um, but obviously I didn't. So now I gotta cut costs in other areas. And when I'm thinking, what do I wanna cut cost in? I probably don't wanna cut cost in anything that rotates, but you know, or anything that develops power. Because the engine's been sitting for a couple of weeks, I'm just gonna take a broom handle and a lint-free cloth, I'm gonna double it up and put a piece of electrical tape around it and put some degreaser on it and just run it through the bearings just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And that is how I'm gonna do my final. That's how I'm gonna do my final on the block. I can reach the back bearing and I can reach All right, now I'm gonna be using uh, my engine assembly lube, stay lube anyway, and I'm kind of getting all of the lobes. I put some on all of the lobes, just kind of gently rubbing around. Now, normally I would have like a piece of all thread here, but the all thread that I had is gone. So I'm just gonna gently glide it in. Just right. The cam is very sharp on the edges, obviously, because it's cut. So, you gotta be real gentle and not force it, not let it drop out of the cam bearings. Alright, so this is where I'm gonna get the cam bolt and stick it in there and lift the cam up a little bit more. And then I put the cam bolt in it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a long socket that's bigger than the head, go over the end and I'm going to use a, kind of a, uh, a long extension here and just give that a lift and pop it right into place just like that. Alright, cam is in.
And now to put the faceplate on for the camshaft. Just like any other faceplate, it has a back and a bottom on it. And so you know you're going to go back bottom and then there's an oil feed hole right there. It's going to match up with the uh, holes and the oil galley there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I put some Loctite on these screws. Some blue Loctite. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down to 120 inch pounds. Get that all tightened up. 120, 120. Okay, so we've got a long and a short cam bolt. The long one is for older carbureted engines. The new one is for fuel injected engines, which is what we have. Now we're gonna put on the new timing chain that we got. Now if you'll notice on here, we've got a dot milled into one of the three keyways here. And that's going to be basically zero degrees advanced. Um, now the cam that we have is a kind of four degrees advanced anyway. So we're gonna leave this in the standard position. If we decide we wanna move it, we can either retard or advance the timing by moving to one of these other two keyways. So I'm just gonna stick it with the, with the dot up. You're gonna notice that on the front of the timing chain also, you're gonna have a dot there. That, so that's the front right there. So you're gonna have that facing out. And you want this facing at six, six o'clock versus the keyway right here on your crank facing at 12 o'clock. So that's the way we're going to install it. I'm gonna go ahead and right there. So I've got 12 and six. And then install these at the same time. not right. That is not right. It skipped a tooth. You gotta be careful not to skip the tooth here. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're looking at. All right. And then just kind of finagle this on just like that. And then once we get it on, take a little, take a mallet, just give it a couple little taps to get it on there all the way. And then we got six o'clock, 12 o'clock, we are set to go. And that timing chain is nice and tight. All right, blue Loctite. Let's stick that on there. Now I actually had to tap the threads of this camshaft if I didn't tell you, I had to tap the threads of the camshaft because the camshaft was not clean. Meaning that I went to go put the bolt into the cam and it basically just stopped like it was cross-threaded. And uh, I called down to comp just to make sure that this was not a different thread, which I knew it wouldn't be, but I just had to make sure. They said, nope, should be the right thread. I chased it with a 3816 tap. All right, 45 foot-pounds, hit that again, make sure, okay. And fast forward a few months and you'll notice that uh, the timing chain and everything's already on it, obviously. Uh, but we took this video a few months ago. I'm really bad at getting my videos edited and, and out there, but we're going to continue rolling this over a few days. I'm gonna go a little bit further than the engine, so forth and so on until we catch up to where we are now. So. Please subscribe so you can see the total build here of our 347 Explorer engine and then the continuation of our Ford Explorer build until completion. You can also check us out on Instagram. I'm a little bit more caught up on Instagram actually, so if you want to fast forward a little bit there, you can see that. Uh, but the rest of the motor videos are coming. So please subscribe and uh, hang out with us for a little bit. We're going to have some fun. That's a wrap from Alpine Garage. We'll see you in the next video.